What's up guys, my name is Brandon and this past week was packed with Apple news, software releases, and hardware releases. So on Monday, we got the release of iOS 15.0.2. On Tuesday, we got Apple event invites for the Unleashed event. On Wednesday, we got iOS 15.1 beta 4. And then on Friday, we got the release of the Apple Watch Series 7, which I did cover every one of those things throughout the week. So if you want more details on those, I did make videos on those and you can go back and watch them. But in this video, we're going to discuss iOS 15.0.2 and iOS 15.1 beta 4 and how those software versions have been running. We'll also discuss the upcoming Apple events on Monday, the Apple Watch Series 7 a little bit, and more. So this is just going to be the typical weekly recap that I do here on the channel every single weekend. All right, so let's start off with iOS 15.0.2 because this is the most popular software version that the majority of people are running. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the storage bug. And that's because it is still not fixed here as of iOS 15.0.2, the latest software release for the public. So if you go into your settings and then to general and iPhone storage, for a lot of people, this number up here is still inaccurate. So the storage bug is still present for a good majority of people. So for me, it's accurate. It shows that 112 gigabytes are used out of 256, but for some people that will just show like zero kilobytes used of you know however much space they have on their device. It's just inaccurate up there. So for whatever reason, that is still not fixed. I would assume that will be fixed very soon, possibly in iOS 15.1, the final release. Now there's also another bug that I just recently heard about, and it seems like a lot of people are having this as well. And it has to do with an automation in the shortcuts application when you have it set to turn a focus mode off. So if you have an automation where like if you leave a location, it turns your focus mode off or on, that is not working properly as of iOS 15.0.2 and also in iOS 15.1 beta 4. So there appears to be an issue with automations related to focus modes. And then the notification overlapping bug seems to be back as well. So where the notifications would just simply overlap each other. And I've not had that since iOS 15.0, but that appears to be back as well. And then also there is a battery percentage bug. So some people are reporting that their battery percentage shows like maybe 80% and then they reboot their device and it shows like 85%. So some people are seeing an inaccurate number up there for the battery percentage. Again, this is another bug I have not personally faced on any device, but it is, you know, not common, but there are multiple people reporting that. But not everything is bad because as you guys know, if you watched my what's new video, the touch responsiveness bug has been resolved as of iOS 15.0.2 and also as of iOS 15.1 beta 4. So mainly in the YouTube application, you were not able to touch the first video that showed up right here, but that has been fixed thanks to a YouTube update. And then it seems like touch responsiveness throughout the iOS, you know, software has also been fixed because some people had that issue inside of mail, inside of Safari and other applications like that. And they all report that it has indeed been fixed. Now, I also wanted to give you guys an update on the digital driver's license. So this is a feature that is coming in iOS 15 and it looks like Florida has now been added as a state that will support carrying your digital ID in the wallet application. So as you guys know, I am based in Florida, so that is huge. And that means that I will now be able to cover this feature when it does get released. So it looks like an app specifically for Florida is going to be available in mid November, but we are not sure when Apple will add the feature to the wallet application, maybe in iOS 15.2 or 15.3, not too sure, but it will be able to be used you know, via that application here in Florida. So that is something I will continue updating you guys on and letting you know when it's available for the select states that Apple will be, you know, including this feature for, because it's not gonna roll out to every single state right away. It's going to be a gradual rollout to specific states at first. And then of course, we also have fixes for the other main bugs that I talked about in my What's New video earlier in the week, like the CarPlay issues, the photos and messages bug, a fix for the leather MagSafe wallet and the AirTags not showing up properly in the Find My application, and an important security patch. So a lot of reasons to upgrade to 15.0.2 if you've not done so already. And then everything in 15.0.2 was pretty much transferred over to 15.1 beta 4, which I have running right here on my 13 Pro Max. 
There wasn't really anything else to discuss with the fourth beta other than the fact that it's just an A build and that the final release is just around the corner. I did not get any new splash screens. I didn't get any new features or changes really. This was mainly just going to be a bug fix update to give us that A build leading up to the final release of 15.1. However, I will say that I am still facing issues with the handoff to HomePod feature. So this freezes up my music application on both versions on 15.0.2 and iOS 15.1 beta 4. So I have that issue along with issues with Siri not answering sometimes. And for some people, Siri is actually causing their phone to overheat, which is weird, but that has not happened to me. I've just had random intermittent issues with Siri. So I mentioned a few bugs, but there's really nothing too bad on iOS 15.0.2 or iOS 15.1 beta 4. I mean, performance is very solid on both versions and on every device I've tested it on, which is every device you see here on the table and more. So really no issues in terms of performance, just a few minor, minor bugs that don't really impact your day-to-day -day usage. And then as far as battery life goes, battery life has actually been really good on both versions on 15.1 and on iOS 15.0.2. So I really have no complaints at all related to battery life, but you guys might have a different experience, which is why I wanted to go ahead and talk about your experience on both of these versions in my community poll. So if you go to my channel and then go to the community tab right here, you would have seen this poll right here that asked, what iOS version are you currently on and how is it running for you? So for me, obviously I'm on both 15.0.2 and 15.1 beta 4, but since I'm using 15.1 beta 4 in this video on my 13 Pro Max, I'm just gonna vote for this and see what the percentages are. So it looks like 58%, we have 21,000 votes and 58% of you guys are on 15.0.2 and it's great with no major issues. And then 15%, or actually 16% is the next one, that are on 15.0 or earlier, which is pretty interesting. Then 15% are on 15.0.2 and say it's not great and they have bugs and bad battery life. And then 8% are on 15.1 beta 4 and it's great with no major issues. And then 3% are having a bad experience with 15.1 beta four. So thank you to everybody who voted. Let's go in here and check out some of these comments. So it looks like somebody's having some issues with Wi-Fi disconnecting and a bit of lag on the iPhone 10 R battery life and performance are great. I'm just tired of the notification delay issue or display issue notifications appearing on top of another always seeing time sensitive notifications pop up and ask if I want to turn it on and random stuttering. So that's what I mentioned earlier about the notifications overlapping. And also it seems like a bug with time sensitive notifications or the prompt popping up constantly. Everything is fine except for that notifications UI bug. So there we go. Once again, no issues for me, except for my bedtime alarm has not been working at all on my iPhone or watch since I updated both. Interesting. Mine's worked perfectly fine. And here's a bug I mentioned earlier. So it seems like some people are having issues with the Siri. So it seems like, well, Siri got split personalities since the introduction of iOS 15. Most of the time it talks like a real person, but sometimes the tone changes and sounds more like a dead robot girl. So yeah, still issues going on with Siri here. And I've had that as well on 15.0.1 and 15.0.2. Find my is draining battery in the background, most visible at night when it takes up 100% of usage. So that's interesting. I've not had any issue. I track my air tags and every pretty much every device up here. So maybe I think that it has an issue to do with potentially notifications when left behind. Maybe that's the cause for that. I'm not too sure because I've not had any issue with find my draining battery. So it looks like this could be an explanation for why people are staying on 15.0 or earlier. This guy here says, keeping my iPhone 11 Pro Max on 14.8, everything works flawless and battery life is great. I'll wait for the bugs to be fixed. So Andy has an iPhone 6S Plus and says that he's having issues getting into the Apple weather app and it's taking ages to go into the app store. And also the storage bug has not been fixed for him. So some interesting bugs there with default applications. Someone's having issues with playback video on 15.0.2. When you play a video in that photo app, it glitches every second and sound glitches when playing a video on social media. So seems like other people are having that issue there as well. I have not personally faced that one. I'm having a bad time with Netflix showing a weird purple screen as I swipe up. That's really strange. I've not seen that and I use Netflix all the time. Still getting the touchscreen bug on YouTube. You may just want to go ahead and update your YouTube application. That could be the only reason why I think you may not be seeing that because it's fixed for everybody else. Hotspot issues continue to plague me since iOS 14. iOS 15.0.2 still facing touch issues on iPhone 12. 
So, you know, that's fixed for the majority of people. I'm not too sure why some people are still facing that. I'm not getting notifications from my wife at all. Today, while unlocked the phone, it just randomly restarted. So interesting bugs there. If you're not getting notifications, you know, that's been one of the age old issues with iOS where you just don't get any indication that you get a notification. It's really strange. I still have that. And I've had that since like iOS 13. So pretty interesting. When using Safari, my iPhone 13 Pro Max gets extremely hot to the diagonal right of the cameras. So this is a pretty strange issue. Someone says that when they swipe up on the lock screen, it doesn't go to the home screen and they have to tap on a notification to get back to the home screen. That is a really strange bug. If you're still having that consistently, I would just try to maybe restore your device because that is a very unusual bug that I have not seen yet. YouTube videos are lagging when I close them. The window lags when I swipe down. Google Translate is super laggy. So third-party app issues, you may wanna update those if those are not fully updated. Jose says, I have the annoying bug with blank widgets on 15.0.1. So that was actually resolved for me and a lot of others in 15.0.2. So you might just wanna go ahead and update to 15.0.2 because that was resolved for me. That was one of the main issues I faced with 15 and 15.0.1. So anyways, thanks to everybody who commented on this poll and of course voted as well. I do appreciate it. I did read every single one of the comments here. So thank you again to everybody who voted. I do those polls every week. All right, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So iOS 15.1, of course we are on beta four and we do have an A at the end of the build number, which means that we should see an RC build next week and we do have the apple event on monday which i will talk about here in a moment so i could see the rc build of 15.1 getting released after that apple event on monday the 18th and as far as the public release it really depends on what happens on monday and when we get that rc build because if we do get that we could see ios 15.1 released to the public as early as next week as well maybe later in the week like the 20th or the 21st but we could also see it, you know, the week of the 25th. It's really hard to say right now because a lot depends on what Apple releases and kind of announces at their event on Monday because they will probably say something about macOS Monterey as well. And of course, it also depends on when those Macs will actually get released to the public. So if we actually see the Macs get released on the 25th, I would expect to have macOS Monterey and likely 15.1 before the 25th. So again, a lot rides on what happens at that event on Monday the 18th. And then I did also wanna to briefly touch on that Apple event. So it's on Monday and it's called the Unleashed event and it takes place at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will be live streaming my reaction to that event here on the channel. So if you wanna stop by and say, hey, it's always a fun time. And we are expecting to see the new M1X MacBook Pros, both 14 and 16 inch and potentially a new Mac mini and maybe even the AirPods 3. So it'll be interesting to see what actually gets announced. And the latest rumors are suggesting that we could even see a notch come to the MacBook Pros, but it will not have Face ID. So it seems like we're still gonna be having Touch ID with the new M1X MacBook Pros, but we could see a notch thanks to that reduction in the bezels on the edges. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is a recap of this past week in Apple. A lot going on. I've really been enjoying this Apple Watch Series 7 and that bigger display. I'm rocking the 45 millimeter right now with this Milanese band right here. I'm loving it. But anyways, that is the latest in the world of Apple. Hope you guys did enjoy this video as usual. If you did, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 15, iPhone, and soon new M1X Mac coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.